Yo. Oh, okay, sorry. <clears throat> Hello everybody, this is Bailey. And this is Cece. Of K-Pop Squad. And welcome to another KPS Ask Box. Yay! A lot of these were anonymous Tumblr and direct email questions. So let's get started with the very first one. Yes. No. Sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. It's not that we don't want to. We've already watched it. Again, blame the V app. Yes, because it's the V app's fault. They keep putting it on, and then we're just like, what's this? And then what we play this? it, and it's like, ah! And we weren't, we didn't know it was like a MV, yeah. concept MV. Yeah. So, and at the same time, it's like, it's a concept MV, guys. Like, I know it's beautiful to look at, but, but there's going to be a real music video. Because I'm waiting for Butterfly. Yeah. That's all I'm waiting on yeah. right now. Yeah. It's all, and I've but, seen the concept photos. But the song is crazy, though. Love the song. There's a lot of cuss words uh, in it, though. You should have. I mean, but they're like cuss words. And I'm like, and the big ones too, you know, not just the little S and H's, like they throwing F bombs and everything. I'm a little disappointed. I was like, at first, cause you know, I, I, I'm with someone else's uh, theory about, you know, who's leading the new album. So first uh, it was Ratman, then it was Sugar, and I'm thinking, okay, J-Hope. It's not J-Hope time J-Hope. It is not the time of J-Hope just yet. But that doesn't mean it's not coming. I know it's not. I know. It's I'm coming. just, you know, but coming. Sugar, you know, for Sugar trying to, so trying to get in comes. on my, on my J-Hope love. See, so. I think that's what it is. I think she a little conflicted. I, think that's I ain't conflicted. Is. I want J-Hope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With a little Sugar on the side. Tell me Anyways, alive. tell me alive. This is why we did not react to Nevermind and we yeah. won't be. In particular, talking about Tao, Luhan, and Chris. Yeah, because those are really the only, I mean, maybe we've had a couple other ones, but not really. Not really. Not well, really. no, we've done EXO Chinese versions too. But they're, but they're still technically, but, but yeah. EXO is K-pop. Yeah. So people will ask that quite often, and the answer to that is, we were introduced to Chris, Luhan, and Tao via K-pop. So why would we suddenly just dump them because they are no longer in the Korean market? Um, we might be named K-pop savant, but in reality, we are here for all good music. And we actually were just told that we must, at some point in our life, react to TF Boys. Yes. Which we'll do. And we will totally do it. We're gonna do that. Why? Because we can. And they're cute. And they're cute. They're little adorable little boys. And there are oh. no set hard set rules to our channel. And also, if fans keep asking for it, we're gonna do it. So. That's kind of how it works. Yeah, but that's really it. It's not like, like, it's just there. We knew them through K-pop. Yeah, I'm not gonna ignore them. Yeah, considering that I'm not an EXO fan, it's actually pretty nice to hear that. And it's actually kind of weird now to think about it because we've also done Japanese promotions, but I don't hear anybody complaining about that. But it's Japanese promotions for a K-pop artist. Still, that's why. Still. I don't. Know. But that's why. Still, if anyone else is still questioning. Yeah. Now, what they're referring to, and actually I can say Black Tumblr, <laughs> has uh, identified this situation where there was a hip hop dissertation at USC yeah. and we were there. We sure were. Of course we're there because there was going to be Garion, DJ Son, Doki, and The Quiet. And it was supposed to be kind of like a talk back slash showcase concert. Thing. Now, I'm gonna admit, when I first got there, even all the way to the day of the event, actually about an hour into the event, <laughs> I had no idea why the dissertation was taking place or yeah. what it was about, but um, I eventually learned that it's about the history of hip hop. Um, and as Korea. far as that comment goes about the, de the degradation of black people, um, we realized that it was because a young lady asked a very loaded question to them uh, regarding the use of... It was in regards to the authenticity of Korean hip hop when you are using AAVE, say for African American vernacular, blah, blah, blah. Um, clothing, cornrows, people like Trudy, who Trudy. seem to be like and a cosplay of 
um, black culture? How can you, you know, define can, yourselves? And what do you, what do you think about it? Was their question like, how, what do you have to say for all the cultural appropriation <laughs> of black talks culture that happening in Korean hip hop? Um, that was basically the question. And it got quiet. It got a little weird. You could tell because yeah. one, uh, it had to be translated. Yes, that was one. And we know that the young lady whose dissertation it was did not translate it completely. Yeah. Uh, so that's another issue for the, the the answer that he gave. Yeah. And two, uh, the person that answered was actually someone that's been in, in the considered hip hop Korean underground scene for a very long time. Yeah, they're considered like the the, the old the godfathers, godfathers in, in a way. Which, Gaeyeon, which was yes, Gaeyeon. Um. And they pretty much said, they pretty much said, this is a paraphrase, you can certainly look up the original text, mm -hmm. but they said, um, they would say anyone, any Korean pretty who much. is going into hip hop and who is not black or from, you know, America, America should look into who they are. They're going to question. And what they are, question yeah. who they are. Um, before going out there and then putting on another appearance and look um, and, and following, you know, some trend is the paraphrase mm -hmm. of it. And we thought it was a perfect answer. Yeah, we actually did because we thought, okay, yeah, look, like, check yourself out. If you're a Korean person, be a Korean person doing hip hop. You don't have to play at something else or, you know, wear something else in order to feel like you're hip hop. That's how we took it, but it seems like that it was. On it was definitely the what I'm seeing huh. is that the translation is being misconstrued and yeah. being misinterpreted in a way that it was not what he's saying. I've seen some people say that, oh, so you're pretty much saying that um, it's our fault. Yeah. That or that Koreans are the only ones that can define who they are and yeah. you guys have no business telling us and what we're about. We, which, and I've seen a lot of huh. it. And when I first, I, was surprised. I read a comment, I forgot where I read it, but when I read it, I'm like, were we at the same event, right? Because I didn't feel that way. I didn't hear it. It had nothing to do with me being black. It had nothing to do with me being able to have a say-so. It just has to do with like what I heard. Yeah, I'm knew. like, I really did not hear or even see a way you could interpret that in such... That interpreted I'm like, so differently. Another thing that, I'm, that I noticed, again, translation was the, was, was the big issue. Yeah. Is that she didn't translate the whole thing. It was like playing phone, yeah. you know? Somebody says something, but if you don't hear it right, then of course the answer mm -hmm. that someone else gives is gonna be different from the actual original question. And Garion, uh, MC Meta, and Nachal, yeah. they both answered. Yes. Only one person got theirs translated. Yeah. We are actually looking to see if we can get that translated for ourselves. Because yeah. I recorded the whole thing. Um, and you can also find it on YouTube, you by the way. You it. can find that moment of the question, yeah. her translation, and yeah. then the cut, so, so to speak. And that sense of communication is misconstrued. Yeah. But a lot of people, are, I've noticed, are blaming, are getting on Doki and the quiet for not answering. Yeah. Um, context is everything. That entire event, Doki answered a lot of questions, a lot of questions that he didn't want to be asked. He didn't want to be asked any frivolous stuff. And there was a lot of questions that had nothing to do with Korean hip hop. And actually at one point he even says, what does this have to do with Korean hip hop though? They you were know, asking him... Meek just, Mills or Drake, Meek, you know, yeah, yeah, those type of questions. And yeah, he's all about Meek Mills. He's already said it a billion times before that. A trillion but times. I think he was really there to really answer some questions that he felt had to do with his art, yeah. his career, who he is as an artist and all of that stuff. It tar starts turning into like a, a fan session. Yeah. And they didn't want that. I was waiting for like mac and cheese or kimchi. Like yeah. I was waiting for those kind of questions to pop up suddenly. I don't know. So when when that question came around, he was kind of just like, I think at that point he had already been done. Yeah. Now, yes, he did say he doesn't know, but I personally feel like he was just annoyed at that point yeah. prior to that because that was probably the first really good question after all of the other not so good questions that took place. Yeah. Um, not making an excuse for it, but as far as people's translation of it and interpretation of it. Yeah, because honestly, there are a lot of people who weren't there, so they just, you, you need to know what preceded that before mm -hmm. you can kind of make huge judgments about why he said or didn't say, you weren't there. And so, I, you, so, you know, you kind of gotta, gotta check that first before you then make these kind of decisions about who he is as a person. Another thing though, I personally feel like a great question, unfortunately, was asked in the wrong form. Yes. Because so. the the moderator 
and the girls who project as well as I don't think they anticipated at all anything that had to do with anything like that. And she was very one-minded and focused about the history of hip hop. However, if you were there, you would know that she didn't lead a lot of things. No. It was a good presentation. I mean, the performances were great, but her herself, as far as, you know, I thought I was gonna go there and I'm learning what she's discovered. Yes. That didn't really happen. She's kind of leaving it up to them yeah. to lead it. Agreed. And then the audience to kind of help out with questions. Yeah. And so... And she's not like a trained translator or anything. So yeah. There were times where a lot of stuff was said and she'd really condense, condense it, it and paraphrase it. And like any language, you know, it's all in the nuances. It's all it's always Context. in how somebody says something. And when you lose that in between from the translator to the audience, a lot of stuff gets left on the table that, you know, that we would love to know, yeah. you know, specifically. So, so yet again... I can't pick up on everything. It was one of those moments where a great question not not the venue just yet that that just unfortunately was not it yeah. it felt like a great opportunity but i'm like but this yeah, is this is not where you're gonna get not the answers that, that you, you want. want especially when it's someone else's show yeah for the most part yeah um but that answers that question so yeah. thank you for asking it anonymous person through our email <laughs> even though we have your email but you know whatever whatever whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> Um, if you would like to ask us more questions, you can always hashtag a social media, KPS Askbox, email us directly, or go to our website, kpopsavant.com. There's a page. And we have a KPS Askbox form. You type it in there, send it to us, and then we'll get them, and then we'll answer them in the next video. Okay? Yay. Thank you for watching. Comment down below if anything you want to say, and we will see you guys on the next, next video.